Hi Siri. Apple Intelligence and iOS 18 just arrived in the UK and a bunch of other countries on millions of iPhones, iPads and Macs. So is it worth turning on or even upgrading your device for it? Here's what I found out at a nice preview with Apple in London, where I tried the new features that arrived on iOS 18.2 from deep chat GPT integration to visual intelligence is now really the time to consider sliding that AI toggle on. Hi, it's Simon and welcome back to the channel. Now, before I show you all of the new features in action that you need to know about, we also need to address the AI problem that's been in front of us and Apple products for a little while. And that is access and features. We've all been waiting a little while for this to come out. They're rolling it out gently, right? Yeah, Europe, Asia, I believe you might have to wait a bit longer. And you'd think, if you're anything like me, a person who loves both great tech and wants to keep productive, we should all be getting super excited about Apple intelligence. But so far, until right now that is, a lot of us have faced some problems. Very few features released until today. You do need an M1 iPad or Mac later, or an iPhone 15 Pro, or any of the iPhone 16s in order to use it. And three, it's been a little unclear on how to adapt your habits to actually using it. Well, it could be the time to adjust that perspective for a lot of us. With that, let's get into the new features, what I liked and slightly lamented, and why it's worth learning how to use it now rather than later. Now adding 18.2 is gonna give you a ton of new features, but it's also gonna improve some of the existing ones we've had for a while, including writing tools, email summaries, and background cleanup for photos. But with 18.2 released today, more of the Apple intelligence puzzle was revealed. And best of them in my book have to be, well, it's a close call between ChatGPT deep integration and first, visual intelligence. So visual intelligence allows us to point a camera at something and get information about it based on the prompt. So during the preview, I got to have a play with making a terrarium. And to be honest, it was quite cool how I could use notes to plan out and learn how to do it. But if you are wondering what a terrarium is, we can ask. Point a camera at something on an iPhone 16. We long press on camera control and then get direct information about that item. You can search Google or you can ask a specific question about it. Tell me about this terrarium. This comes with the 18.2 update. You can use this as a Google search out in the real world. So if you wanna find out about a building that you're passing or a, um, a pair of trainers that you see in a shop, you could probably use this for that. The only problem is with all of this stuff is you've gotta build the habit, right? In order to actually use it. So if you've got a phone that will do it, give it a go and let me know in the comments what you actually remember to use. Now, in my opinion, the next best upgrade we tried today had to be the deeper interface with ChatGPT that comes with 18.2. Now, this is probably the upgrade that a lot of people have been waiting for. It allows you free direct access to ChatGPT without an account to ChatGPT, and it protects you with proper privacy settings, None of the information is going to be kept or stored by Apple or ChatGPT and it just allows you to actually access it quickly. Now if you own, let's say, a ChatGTP account, log into that, it will revert to the settings you've got for that account and it'll allow you to access those uh, bigger, more powerful models if you want them. But for the masses, it's this that's actually going to mean that LLM models are now accessible day to day on your phone, on your Mac. Here are some demos. I think it's really good. So this has been around in writing tools for a little while now, but I'm really enjoying the way that we can adapt writing styles. I think it works really well, but one of the new features coming with 18.2, which I think is really worth noticing, so we click into here, is describe your change. So we can then get really granular and specific about what we want to change about the content. So for example, adapt this bio to meet friends. Maybe we want the style of it to be specifically for that. We can press go on it and you'll see Apple Intelligence adapts the vibe of the description. But what if we wanted to add a little more to it? We then of course have this new element within here which is to compose and it will jump to ChatGPT. Okay, let me show you how quick and easy it is now to use ChatGPT 
Apple intelligence across the Mac. So I'm currently just in notes. We can right click, find writing tools and compose and you're straight to ChatGPT. So I'm gonna plan a video on Siri and ChatGPT using Siri and ChatGPT. So if we go into here, we're just gonna say, plan a video for YouTube on the features of Siri. And there you go, magically we've got our plan. Now I wouldn't just use this, but I can absolutely now work with it. I can click on this button here, I can describe changes, let's say we wanna make it more concise, and then it will use the on-device AI system to use the writing tools, adjust what we've written. How brilliant is that? It's super, super quick. So we can do it in pages. This is my Loch Ness plan, and we've even got a little Loch Ness monster that we generated in Image Playground, the generative tools. Pretty cool. I have to say, I do use the features I've had access to since October more now, just because they are integrated into the ecosystem that I use each day. It's things like those email summaries where I can summarize an entire list of emails, and notably the priority view in Apple Mail, which actually I really like and have found incredibly valuable. I've managed to remember the few things that I would have missed had it not been drawn out from the email list for me. So I definitely recommend recommend those features. Okay, so that's great, but we got a few more things we need to look at before we call whether you should be switching this on. Generative models. Apple also released Genmojis and their new Image Playground in this update. Oh, and the Magic Wand tool that might be my favorite. I have some thoughts. They may not be for everyone, but they are still very much a milestone we need to take note of. I played with a few examples today of what's possible and it has to be the accessibility of the features right there on your phone or laptop that jumps out. We created a children's bedtime story in this little demo session. It was quite cool actually. You can easily use the chat GPT integration and then create a Genmoji. Uh, and I was using the image playground to create an astronaut cheetah, like you do. Ah, we can it adapt is. the style. <laughs> Very different looking koala. Oh wow, that's really different. You can add prompts, choose between animation style or drawing style, which is quite cool, and then easily add them to documents. It's good, it's fun, definitely one for the young ones and the parents. I don't yet see a ton of use cases for me at work, but hey, it's fun, and I actually think that the new gen emojis, while simple, will be loved, uh, as you can create really specific emojis, anything you dream up, and then use them in either messages or as stickers and throughout your system once you've created them. Now the generative tool that really impressed me though was that image wand tool in notes. When we were making that terrarium, we actually just kind of drew what we thought a terrarium might be and then it kind of turned it into a sketch which is rather cool. You circle it using the Apple Pencil tool and then you can see it. And I think this could actually be a really nice little item for those of you maybe creating presentations or students making notes uh, as it develops. But I'm still most struck by that chat GPT integration for quick access to ideas. Now on the subject of images, an honorable mention has to also go to the existing feature that removes unwanted people or objects from the background of photos. Fantastic, and it's good. Samsung and Google Pixel users just skip to the next sentence because we know you've had it for years. Honestly, it's actually very good and it saves a little time not having to frame or reframe photos carefully in the moment. I can just snap and if I want to clean up the background, I can. So that's cool. Okay, so why is all this really worth talking about? These features use generative models powered by the on-device neural engine to create some nice cartoons. Oh, but hang on because it's actually the first part that we need to take note of, on device. Apple are essentially removing the barrier to these tools for the masses. Well, the masses who can afford a reasonably expensive phone. And remember, you're gonna need an iPhone 15 Pro like this one or up or an M1 chip device and up in order to use this with a very good value exception we'll talk about at the end of the video. Now, this is how to turn on Apple Intelligence on a phone or iPad. We're going to go into settings, go down to general, 
and then click on software update. Now, it will be the same on a Mac, you just need to find where you usually do your software updates in the settings. And you need to make sure that here you have iOS 18.2 installed. And if there's an update there, you'll be able to select that to update or leave it overnight. On a Mac, you're looking for 15.2 to access all of these new features. So it's updated, it will say, Hello, as you might expect. Software update is complete. And once you've turned it on, you can press to set it up right now. I'm not gonna do that, because I wanna show you if you've already updated uh, where you would do it. Go into settings, and if you scroll down now past general, you should see Apple Intelligence and Siri. You can click on that and turn on Apple Intelligence. So we're gonna click that. And what I'm really excited about with this is none of your data gets shared with anyone. Click. Continue, so it's gonna tell us what it will do. It will summarize notifications. I'm gonna turn that on. Actually, I'm not gonna choose it. And I'm just gonna drop out of it to show you because if you drop out of that automatic setup system, don't worry, you've got all of the options within the menu so you can set when it announces calls. But the one you might be most interested in is to go down to ChatGPT and you can use ChatGPT. So I can set that up. I'm gonna click next, I'm gonna either enable ChatGPT or use it with an account. I'm actually gonna use it with my account, so I'm gonna sign in, and now I have all the options within ChatGPT directly on the system. So that should be me set up. Let's double check, I can hold the button. What is happening today with Apple? Apple was up 0.6% yesterday. And we could also tap to speak to Siri if we wanna keep it quiet. So, does this all add up to a good enough reason for you to turn on Apple AI? For me, I think now is the moment to turn it on if you have the devices to do it with. The upgrade train is therefore very much arriving for us once more, but to be fair, I think this iPhone 16 Pro or iPhone 16 is a brilliant and fully realized option these days. You get that camera control, it's got all that neural engine capability, you've got great cameras, all the rest of it. So for me, I am sticking with this, I think, for a couple of years now, and I think it's a sensible upgrade. But on the computer front, if you don't own an M1 or up, iPad or iMac, there is one other option that is the cheapest way to get to Apple intelligence right now, and that is the Minis. That new iPad Mini 7, or the much celebrated recent release of the M4 Mac Mini, are gonna give you access for 499 and 599 up, respectively. That's unbelievable and a brilliant price to get in with Apple Intelligence. So if you wanna know if they're for you, I recommend watching one of these videos next for my full reviews. I really enjoyed them when I tried them. And you better click my face down here to subscribe if you haven't before you go. See you on the next one. Bye.